everyone, welcome to another video. Before we get started today, we do have a few shout outs. So big shout out to Golderma, to Kat and to Amessi. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet and you'd like a shout out, stay tuned to the end of the video where I tell you how you can do that. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at social media. In particular, we're going to be thinking about this alongside the musicians and the music videos that you guys have to study for component two, section B. So the first thing to be aware of really is that each of the different social media that these stars are likely to have will have a different primary demographic. So for instance, the primary demographic for Facebook is likely to be females who are 18 to 49, more likely in that 30 to 49 age range, just because they're going to be the ones who have grown up with Facebook. And so we're also going to be B to C2 on the ABC system. This is just something that Facebook have found out over time is that typically it's more women within this age range who are using the platform as a whole. On the other hand, Twitter is an equal split between females and males and they tend to be a younger demographic of 18 to 29 year olds who are often very socially aware and who have very strong opinions who perhaps are C1 to D on that ABC scale. And you can find all of this out online if you start looking at the different primary demographics of each of the social media there's a really useful website which i'll pop in the description box below that will help you out with this so instagram then typically another female demographic more so than men younger quite young 13 to 29 more likely in that 13 to 17 age range if we wanted to split it down further and then obviously because of this they're less likely to have that disposable income and are therefore going to be c2 to e on that ABC scale. YouTube, interestingly, tends to be more male-centered, 13 to 49, although if we were splitting this down further, it's more likely to be in that 18 to 29 age range, B to C2 on the ABC scale. And then Snapchat, which is an interesting social media that I'll come on to a little bit later on, is female to male, so again, a relatively even split between the genders, 13 to 29, and again, more likely in that really young demographic of 13 to 17, C2 to E. Now, we could have added in other social media such as TikTok here as well, but these are the ones that were on the stars' social, um, the stars websites advertised as their social media or their prime social media. So these are going to be the ones that we consider the most. So now that we've thought about the primary demographic who access these platforms, let's think about what they're used for. Facebook is typically the main page that these stars use for their upcoming projects. So they'll use it as a promotions page to post about things that they're working on, as well as sharing content and promotion from other websites as a form of convergence or perhaps synergy as well. Twitter, on the other hand, though, is used to create a more personal connection with the audience. So stars will often interact with fans on an individual level by either replying directly to them, retweeting something that they have already posted, and often they run competitions and polls through this page as well. Now obviously you can run competitions and polls through lots of other social media but Twitter seems to one that they use the most for for that particular function. Now Instagram is obviously a social media platform that is based around images and so obviously with our musicians and with our stars we're going to see them using Instagram to present an, a representation of who they are. Now the image that we see on there is likely to be based around their star persona and is not going to be who they genuinely are as a person or what they are genuinely doing that day but it's obviously going to be designed to make them seem like they're sharing their real self or their real life with their fans so that we feel as a fan as an audience member, more connected and more involved personally with their lives. YouTube then, predominantly for musicians, is going to be a page for them to share their discography through partnership with companies like Vivo, which is one of the big ones that they would work with in hosting their videos on um, on YouTube and so we've got synergy there as well. Now often they're going to also share behind the scenes footage of their latest video and album so that audiences feel like they're getting a little bit extra from that star, from that celebrity and it encourages them more to use obviously YouTube for that rather than other social media. Now Snapchat as I said was kind of interesting and the reason that this is interesting is because Although stars like Katy Perry and Taylor Swift have a Snapchat, Katy Perry doesn't advertise this on her website, whereas Taylor Swift does. And Bruno Mars himself doesn't actually have this platform as something to connect with his audience. So the likelihood is that this isn't as useful for a star's promotion as some of the other bigger 
names that we've already looked at in terms of social media. What we can say though is that because Snapchat is all about quick media and a quick turnaround in media, stars are going to be using this likely to post updates or to take part in trends that are popular with the platform itself. And that would be a little bit like TikTok as well, because it's obviously a platform that's got a lot of trends and a lot of things that are associated with it. You may see stars then using that to sort of get on board this big trend and connect with their audience that way. But it's likely that is this isn't as um, useful to a, a star or a musician as the previous social media that we've looked at. Now, the reason that I've done this as a social media as a whole and not looking at each individual artist is because if I did that, then obviously it would take me quite some time. And also the, their social media is ever changing. So as you've no doubt seen with Taylor Swift, who seems to be releasing a website, you know, sort of month after month after month, I would then have to go through and annotate all of that social media as and when it changes. So what I'm instead going to do for you guys is obviously give you the basics of the demographics who are on there and give you the basic uses. But then what you guys need to do, and this is a really useful technique for you guys to use as revision, is to take some time to analyse the social social media pages of the musicians that you personally are studying. So a good technique would be to print screen their social media page and to annotate it much the same way that you would with with a poster, with a homepage to their website, and think about the following. So first of all, think about the avatar that they're using as their sort of main image or main icon. And, and with that, the banner that they use for their social media page. Does this link to the house styles that are on their website? Does this link to other social media that they're using? Are they using the same images over and over? And if they are, why? What does that image tell us about that person? You could also think about the sort of posts that they've pinned. If they've got something pinned to the top of their page on Twitter, what is the post about and why might they have done this? This would be particularly useful to do now, and especially if you're looking at somebody like Taylor Swift, who is quite into politics or is getting more into politics, now that the results of the US election have been posted, have a look at the sort of posts that have been pinned, have a look at the sort of posts that are being retweeted, and think about why stars might have done this. And another thing for you guys to remember as you're annotating and as you're looking at this social media is to remember that even though it seems like the star themselves are interacting on social media, often it's the brand manager or the social media team who are monitoring how well each post does and then using that information and using that data to increase the star's visibility by getting them to post more that does really well and has more retweets and more views and more interaction and less of things that people don't seem to be you know, sort of interacting with as much. Hopefully that was helpful. I know it was a relatively quick video today. Here are a few key terms for you guys to have a look at and be aware of. Make sure you look them up if you're not sure what they mean. If you haven't already, also please subscribe below by hitting that subscribe button. If you hit the bell icon next to it, then you get instant notifications every time I post a new video. If you also subscribe to the channel, you do get a shout out in the very next video. If I owe you a shout out because your subscriptions are private, then just pop me a comment in the comment section below and I'll pop you into the next video. As always, you can leave me any questions, comments, ideas, anything you like down in the comment section below. I do go through and read every single one of them. Or you can get in touch with me through my social media at media underscore revision or GCSE media revision on Instagram. And I'll see you guys later for another video.